We sailed into St. Michael's numerous times. And in 82, I think it was, when my dad retired, we sailed into St. Michael's and he said, he said, let's go for a walk. And we go for a walk and, and they go, we just bought that house. Which came as quite a surprise since they hadn't mentioned it. It sort of made me look at, at the St. Michael's in the area in a different way than I had before. Uh, and I said, we should start a chamber music series here. So by, by 85, we, we'd come to say, okay, let's do an experiment. Yeah. That first year, we were going to do one public concert at the Maritime Museum and one private concert to raise money to see if there could be a second year. And uh, that was a house concert at uh, Richard and Alice Norair's house. You know, I called up my friend Marcy Rosen, who I'd known since we, we had played a festival together. I think she was 16, I was maybe 20 at this festival, and we got to know each other, and we played the Brahms Quintet together, and were coached by my teacher, who was principal clarinet of the Philadelphia Orchestra, and, and we became friends. I said, does your quartet want to come down and, you know, we're, we're going to do this, you know, and a string quartet would be great. And she called me back uh, a little later and said, well, two of us do and two of them don't. So who do you want to get? And I had just recently done a tour with the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra in New York. And I said, well, how about... I named a violist and a violinist, and she said, okay, she knew both of them, and, and they both said yes. So we, we brought them down, and we literally did it at the Maritime Museum outdoors in a gazebo, and uh, Naoko Tanaka was, the, was playing first violin, and she kind of very quietly said, uh, Son, not good for Stradivarius. So my brother had come over, to, and and he's a he was a theater techie, and so he built like some plywood block so that the sun wouldn't be on the the very valuable yeah. you know string instruments, and we played this concert with you know all the noise you can imagine in the harbor on a summer afternoon which was interesting uh, and we and we played a concert at Norair's uh, which was really that's a fascinating house we were in they gave us as as a warm-up room a, a room about the size of this that was the original house it was built in 1640 by Quakers and then a big house had grown up around it and we had I, I can't remember exactly we had I think we had room for maybe 80 people and it was completely full and we made enough money to to say yes we're going to have another year and and that night after the concert we went back to my parents house and and we're having something to eat and drink and I said okay next year we want to add a pianist who do we get and all four of them said Diane Walsh and I said, well, I don't know who Diane Walsh is, but if you get four string players saying, that agree on the same person right out of, you know, that's who we're getting. So, you know, we got Diane, and, and Diane was with us in the second year. And, it, and then it, it just started to blossom. She said my dad was running the, the business end of things. Uh, and in, in the very beginning, we were actually under the wing of the Academy of Art, That's right. uh, and then it became clear that, that there was sort of a conflict of interest in fundraising, that we might want to be going after the same grants, and that it made more sense for us to separate, so we did. And, and then we were playing a concert at, at the Avalon, and after the concert, a, a gentleman came down and said, this was fantastic. I don't know if people understand what they're, the level of what they're hearing. And that was Harry Feinberg. Harry and Gene had started the Shriver Hall series at, at Johns Hopkins. 
they knew chamber music. I mean, they he started naming the groups he knew personally from years of playing there, like the Beaux Arts Trio. And he said, "We we've got to make sure this." succeeds and grows and and he came on board and ultimately became president of the board and and we had by then ingrained the idea of a house concert that was our final concert and was a fundraiser to, um, he wanted those at his house uh, which was on the miles river a big old plantation home and he had a busendorfer that he had picked out at the factory in vienna um, so you know, it's just continued to grow. What are you looking for when, when you want to start a festival? A beautiful place that people want to come, yeah. uh, a local population that, that is interested, and you've got a lot of people who live here, many of whom have come from Washington and Baltimore and Philadelphia, and are used to having this at their fingertips, and it wasn't here, at least certainly not at this level. Yeah. The, the main thing was getting, getting the word out and figuring out, like, don't have a concert at 3 o'clock on a Saturday, everybody's sailing. So, you know, we, we actually played in, in Prager Auditorium, which used to be the Historical Society, and, and, and had to take a piano up, in a, but the elevator isn't big enough for a piano, it, it had to be carried up. So, now when we play there, we do programs without piano. There's, there's no question that we have such a great time here. We, we all stay with families. M most of us have been going to the same people for years. We have a long relationship with them. We meet them other places. Um, and, and so it does feel like, you know, it, the, the more connection you have to an audience, the more fun it is for performers. Yeah. Uh, you're not playing for a, a blank set, you're playing for friends of yours, and, that, and that's lovely, I think, for both sides. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it is amazing to me to think that 34 years later, we're still here. I think it's great. I'm, I'm stepping down. I've decided that, you know, I, I've, I've played in the Chicago Symphony, I've run it this little festival. I play in a chamber group in Chicago. I've taught at major universities for the last 39 years that I've been in Chicago. And I'm trying to slow down a little bit. And there's no right or wrong time to leave. You just sort of have to make a decision. Yeah. But we've made a, a really lovely transition that we're in right now with Catherine Cho is going to take over for me and work with Marcy. It's really helpful to have two people, yeah. one person trying to do it, unless, unless we were a much bigger thing and had you know, a lot of staff. And, you know. There's a lot of trust involved when you're presenting the kind of thing we're doing. We trust people are going to show up and hopefully have an open mind. And they have to trust that we're going to present something that's worth hearing, help them with difficult stuff, and play it well enough that they, that they can see that there was a reason that we did this. Yeah, yeah. And I, th I think that that's very important in, in the arts, that, that you develop, well, especially live art where we're performing, that you develop that kind of trust. I mean, I, I have nothing against pop music and country western and stuff, but ours, what we're doing is a little different. We're not, we're not in a bar and we're not background music. It drives my wife a little nuts, but I, I don't like classical music on as background music because oh. I can't not pay attention. And if you're trying to talk to me and I'm hearing that, I'm really listening to that. Kathy and, and Marcy have very kindly already said, we want you back anytime you want to come back, yeah, um, which is very sweet. Uh, but, you know, I'm getting older. Yeah. I, I, it's been a joy for me to get to come here yeah. all these years and feel like I'm a small part of this community.